Hi everybody, Rob Mize with you again, and I hope you're ready to celebrate. Life is good, and we have a new tutorial on producing fireworks in After Effects. So if you have something to celebrate, commemorate, honor, glorify, memorialize, or you just want to live it up a little, then let's light this thing up and get started. If you have Trap Code Particular, you've probably already discovered the included fireworks presets, and you'll notice all these parameters, and in particular, the auxiliary system, which provides the controls to create this nice pyrotechnic burst. Well, let's see what we can do if we don't have Particular, using what we have in After Effects, like our old reliable friend, CC Particle World which will add to this comp size solid, it's 1280 by 720, and obviously the color of the solid doesn't matter. The first thing we'll do is create our fireworks burst. So I'll reduce the XYZ radius to zero because I want all these particles to be produced in the same point, not spread out all over the layer. Here in physics, we want the animation to be explosive, sending particles out in 360 degrees in X, Y, and Z space. Let's leave these other settings alone for now and change the particle type to darkened and faded sphere. Let's have our fireworks burst here at the 4 second mark. Let's add a zero birth rate keyframe and use alt left cursor to move that back one frame to the 3 second 29 frame mark on our timeline. Add another zero keyframe and use alt right cursor to move it forward to the four second six frame mark on the timeline. And here at our burst point, I'll increase the birth rate to four and use alt command click to make that a hold keyframe so that the birth rate remains at a value of four until we reach this zero keyframe at the 406 mark. And here's what we have. Well, that's not especially impressive, but I think we can dress this up a bit. Open the opacity map on the particle world effect, and let's redraw it so that the particles are at full opacity when they're born, and then we can let them fade out as they die. And while we're at it, let's increase the particle longevity to two seconds and change the birth size to 0.15 and the death size to zero. Since Particle World doesn't have the auxiliary system that Trap Code Particular has, we'll extend these particles using a time effect. Let's select Effect, Time, Echo. Right away, we can see a duplicate of our particles. Think of these as visual echoes of our particles in time. I want my echoes to occur at a rapid frequency, so I'll reduce the echo time to 0 .005, and the number of echoes to 50, and there's the extension of our particle. Now, to taper these streams, I'll bring starting intensity to 0.1 and the decay to 1.1, and leave the echo operator in add. Also, consider how is it that we see these particles while the birth rate is at zero. That's because we're seeing the echoes of the particles. Now, if you want the burst to commence exactly at four seconds, then lasso these keyframes and use the Alt-Right cursor keys to move them forward until the beginning burst is right at four seconds. But I'm moving these back where I had them because I want that four second mark to use as a reference for some other things we're gonna do. One of the things I like most about using Particle World is it's a 3D effect. If we create a camera, you'll see what I mean. Now, since Particle World only reflects the active camera view, I usually set a hold keyframe for this default setting of the camera position and point of interest, so that when I change the camera position to check the effect, when I'm finished with that, I can delete the new camera keyframes that are created and return back to my default camera position. But here you can see that our particles are blasting into 3D space and that gives us the ability to create some really interesting effects. So for now, I'll delete this keyframe and return my camera back to the default position. Let's make a couple of adjustments. I want these particles to really burst out so I'll increase the velocity to four, 
and you'll notice that you see the individual echo particles. We could take care of this by adjusting the echo time and the number of echoes, but in this case, we'll resolve this by adding some motion blur to our particle layer and then enabling that motion blur. That looks like it'll work for us, but for right now, I'll disable the motion blur just to speed our operations up a bit. Now with this increased velocity, the burst is spreading out farther than I want. So I'll counter the velocity with some resistance. Let's say about 8. And because I can, I'm going to make this a multicolored burst. Here where the burst starts, I'll add a birth color keyframe, come forward one frame, change the color. And you'll note that a keyframe is automatically added when these parameter values are changed. Come forward another frame, select another color. And I'll do this again and again until the burst is completed. I'll Alt-click the Death Color Stopwatch and pick whip this to the birth color to link them with an expression so that the particle color remains constant throughout its life. And I'll change the transfer mode to screen. Let's add a stylized glow effect. Threshold I'll make about 70, radius about 50, intensity at 2, change the glow operation to none, but experiment with these settings to see the results that you prefer. Now let's see what our RAM preview looks like. Now that we have our burst, let's launch it to where we want the explosion to occur. And this may seem like a backward way of doing things, but I often start an animation from the resolved position and then work backward to the beginning. I don't know, it works for me. Now let's talk about positioning particles. Almost without exception, you want to position the producer using the particle world effect controls, not the position controls of the layer, because you'll wind up with particles going off that layer and they won't be visible in the comp window. And that's probably not the result you want. So let's use the producer's Y position to move our burst up where we want it and add a keyframe. Come to the start of the timeline and drag the producer down to the launch position. Let's get rid of this zero birth rate keyframe that creates our burst and we'll see the particles produced from launch to burst position. And obviously, this is not the look we want. So let's make some adjustments to distinguish the launch particles from the burst particles. And I like to do this from a point between the launch and burst positions. I find I can see my results a little bit quicker. So let's add a keyframe for velocity, gravity, and birth size and drag them to the 4 second burst position. Now reduce velocity to about 0.05. That will stop our particles from spreading out as much. We'll reduce gravity to 0.05 and that will shorten the tail on these particles and reduce birth size to about 0.05 to make them smaller than the burst particles. And I'll also reduce the birth rate to about 0.2. In order to maintain these values from launch to burst positions, lasso them, alt command click to make them hold keyframes, and let's drag them to the launch position. Now this accomplishes our launch, but I want to show you another, and for this purpose, what I think is a better way to control and position the particle producer using a null object. Let's create a new null object and make it 3D. Hit P to reveal the position parameters, and note that if we position the null to the left edge of the screen, the X value is 0, and it increases to 1280, the width of our comp, as it moves to screen right. Our particle producer, however, has an X position value of minus 0.5 at screen left and increases to zero at the center and positive 0.5 at screen right. So we can't just pick whip this control to the null because the parameters used by particle world are different than the null position parameters. How do we resolve this inconsistency? 
by means of a brilliant expression that I've seen in a number of places, but I first found it on the Creative Cow Forum, courtesy of Kevin Camp, whose generous expertise has helped me with a number of problems. When I find a useful expression like this, I copy it and save it in a text document so I have it for later use. I'll copy this expression for the X value and Alt-click the Particle World X position and paste the expression in the expression field. Now watch what happens. After Effects tells me it can't find null 1 in this comp. That's because I already have null 1 in another composition in this project. So After Effects named this one null 2. But all I need to do is rename this to null 1 as indicated in the expression. I could as easily modify the expression to reflect how the null is named. But the point is, the null's name must match the reference used in the expression. Back in our text file, copy the Y expression, Alt-click the Y position stopwatch on the effect, and paste the expression in the expression field. And then do the same for position Z. Now the null will control the position of the particle producer. And if you use Particle World very much, I think you'll find Mr. Camp's expression will open up a whole new world of creative opportunities for you. Thanks again to Kevin Camp. Now let's solo our null layer and add a couple of keyframes to the layer position parameters to position the null where we want our fireworks to launch and then burst. Now, you should see the null's motion path. If not, use command shift semicolon to make that visible. Now we can use the G key to select and cycle through our pen tools and use the convert vertex tool to select this keyframe on the motion path and just like a Bezier curve on a mask or shape, grab this handle and shape the motion path however you want it. And notice my current time indicator does not have to be on the keyframe in the timeline. I can select the keyframe and adjust it directly in the comp window. So this becomes really useful for adjusting an object's position between keyframes without adding additional keyframes. So using this method, I find that usually fewer keyframes are required, producing a smoother animation. You can't create a curved path like this directly with Particle World's position parameters. Now for a different look, let me show you a layer I prepared earlier. I duplicated my skyrocket layer, adjusted the echo effect, increased the burst birth rate, and increased the resistance. And since Particle World doesn't offer a random longevity or opacity, I added an Effect Transition Block Dissolve. If I turn off Particle World for a minute, you can see the dissolve going from 0 to 100%, and we get something close to the particles kind of winking out. We'll turn Particle World back on and see what I believe in the pyrotechnics trade is called a chrysanthemum burst. Now, to turn that into a Saturn burst, I duplicated the chrysanthemum layer and removed the launch keyframes. I replaced the zero birth rate keyframe before the big burst keyframe and changed the animation to twirly. Let's rotate our camera above our burst and see that the particles are exploding in a disk shape in X and Z space. I changed extra to zero to restrict the particles and removed the twirl from the particle motion by changing the extra angle to zero. The resistance is reduced to about 2.5 and I'm using the birth to death color. I got rid of the expressions linking to the null by alt clicking the stopwatch and used the particle position controls to place this at the center of the chrysanthemum burst and slid the layer forward on the timeline to delay the ring burst after the initial burst. 
Now, on this multi-burst, I don't have a launch animation, so I'm not using the null to control the particle producer. Rather, this series of hold key frames uses particle world's particle producer position parameters to place the particles properly. Well said. Then, for each position, there are a couple of birth rate keyframes to create our bursts and some hold color keyframes to get this series of multicolored explosions. Remember, you may want to adjust the position of these keyframes to compensate for the echo effect. Play with all these settings. Try different transfer modes, particle types, animation settings, etc., etc., because there's much, much more you can do with this. But we'll wrap it up for now so you can get to work and apply these techniques to creating fireworks or some other project you're working on. I hope you have fun with this. Just play safe and find a reason to celebrate and create something spectacular. Until next time, this is Rob Mize wishing you happy compositing.